What is going on, everybody? What is going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I know I'm a couple minutes late, but I had to make sure I had to get my videos lined up for tomorrow. I actually just got back in from seeing the King Richard movie. My review for that will be going up tomorrow. So be stay, be on the lookout for that, as I'm sure y'all will. Um, before y'all do anything else, if you haven't done so already, make sure y'all go ahead and hit that like button and share the stream. I know it's a, quite a few people that's going live right now because of the news that just came out about an hour or so ago. And we're going to definitely talk about that. I was actually going to say, you know, anything Rittenhouse related towards the end. But since that has taken precedence, that's probably going to be the first thing that I'm going to talk about. So make sure y'all go ahead, hit that like button. Share the stream everywhere as far as you possibly can. I will greatly appreciate it. Let's see, who do we have in here so far? Pisces, the king, gnome king, Darlene, black light revelations, Maximus royalty, what's going on? Salute to everybody who was here so far, Leticia. If I wasn't going live today, I would have been on Lisa Cabrera's live stream right now because she, you know, she sent me the link to come up and talk about the recent news. That's actually what I was listening to as I was getting my videos prepped for tomorrow. Huh. Uh, let's see who else do we have in here jonathan richardson spidey joseph what's going on what's going on and i want to try to get through this stream as i as pop as quick as possible because i definitely want y'all to catch that premiere that i have waiting for y'all on the main channel that's coming at six o'clock. Let's see what's going on, Pinky JYB. What's going on? What's going on? I hope everybody's having a good day so far. I know that I am, you know, despite, you know, the news, but who's really surprised? Honestly, who's really surprised? I would have been surprised if he would have been found guilty of anything. But that the thing it was set up in his favor from the get go. So here, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so here we are. Let's see who else. What's going on, Sunlight Vulcan 2054? I had to share the, excuse the fact that there was a little bit of dead air that I had to share the stream. I shared it on my Twitter account and on my, and in the Discord. What's going on, Tanjan? I feel like I haven't seen you in a minute. It's been a while since I've seen your name pop up anywhere, like in any of my comment sections or other chat or anything like that. What's going on, NT? I hope everybody's having a very, you know, a good day. Let me get started in a couple more minutes. Black like said he did the current tears when they read the verdict. I saw that. I definitely saw that. Yeah. <sighs> 
Johnson said, just the way that they were handling the trial, including the judge, I knew he wasn't going to be found guilty. That's that's why I said I don't know why people are so shocked. Like we saw, we we all saw how it went down throughout this last couple of weeks. We saw it in real time. And I actually have a video coming soon, probably within the next day or two, probably within the next couple of days, because it's like right there. Like um basically saying what it's like when we get on code versus when they get on code. But I'm not, that's basically all y'all are going to hear so far so much about at this point in time. I don't want to go in on what it is I'm actually going to be discussing, but it's definitely going to be something that needs to be talked about. Huh, Jerome, what's going on? DeAndre, what's up? Jerome said, well, we saw this coming. The white boys turning up on Twitter. You know, they need a win somehow. They needed a win somehow. You know, they couldn't get it with Derek Chauvin. And to be honest, that would have been impossible because, like, how was he going to walk from that? <clears throat> but, yeah, we do have a few topics to talk about. But, of course, you know, wanted to hit on the main one so far today. Because, like I said, I was going to save this for the end just in case they still hadn't reached a verdict yet. But since they have, that'll be the first thing we talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to go ahead and get started because this is what we're starting with. So as you can see, this is from the Wall Street Journal. It says Kyle Rittenhouse found not guilty of all charges in killing of two. The teenager faced charges, including intentional and reckless homicide. His attorney said he acted in self-defense. And I'm going to go ahead and play this. There you go. There it is. I didn't know he did all of this. He threw on the theatrics even more this time. He done, He almost fainted to the floor. Mm. I wish he would have hit his head and got a concussion when he dropped. Like, I didn't know he did all of that. I only saw the screen, the little thumbnail of him crying, quote unquote. And even then, there's still no tears. Notice he didn't reach for a Kleenex and the Kleenex is sitting right there in front. So, yeah, that was his his little dramatic performance. I guess he said the last one wasn't strong enough. Oh, y'all didn't believe this one. Well, you're going to believe this one. So. There it is. None of us are surprised. None of us are remotely surprised that he got found not guilty. They literally set all of this up in his favor to walk and to win. The judge was completely one-sided and very biased. I have never seen a judge do that ever in my life. Yet I bet if a black judge was to do that, then you know. Well, if you know, you know. Sunlight said she said he knew he was walking weeks ago. Something tells me he's going to do something. He's going to slip up and he's going to be right back. And he's going to be in another predicament because, you know, he didn't learn nothing from this. He's going to go out and he's probably going to strike again. He's young. He's dumb. He has an issue. So he has issues. And he said, I guess his Karen tears work. Oh, yes, they most definitely did. They most definitely did. All in theatrics and for what? <laughs> like, I can't even bring myself to be remotely mad. All I'm going to say is this. To PC out there, y'all might not be listening, but, it, but I'm going to just say it. 
you now realize what happens to you when you get off code. Because those three PC males that Kyle shot and injured or killed in that moment were off code. So the system was going to be on his side to make sure that he had walked. And like Professor Black Truth has been doing lately, and shout out to him for the Moment of Truth videos, but especially for the one he did this morning. They can't afford to take another L. The, one of the biggest L's they took this year was Derek Chauvin. There was absolutely no way. I mean, it could have been, but there was absolutely no way that they were going to let Derek Chauvin walk from what he did last year. That just wasn't happening. So they needed a rebound. And Rittenhouse was that rebound. And a big one. And I guess you could say in some type of way, a big one for him. So now, you know, the dub best, they're going to be riding off into the sunset with this one. They're going to have their little win. They're going to talk about this for a while. So get ready for it. Them trolls are like, I don't even want to know what it's looking like over there on Twitter right now. To be honest, when I got on Twitter just to share this, I didn't really see anybody talking about it. I didn't go and look in the, the Explore page or the trending topics because I know it's trending. It's probably the number one trending topic. It is what it is. Sunlight said the affluence of kid was a repeat offender and it didn't make a difference. You're right. Him and his ratchet mama hopped the border after it got discovered that he broke his probation when he was found playing beer pong with some uh, with some teenagers a couple years later. Because his probation or one of the one of the uh, pieces in his um, his uh, probation was to not be consuming any alcohol. And he was not only consuming alcohol, but he was also on camera while doing it. And when he got caught and it was about to take him to jail, they know him and his mother hopped that Mexican border and they found him over there. And when he did end up going to jail, it's not for the crime in which he committed in which four people lost their lives. It was because he broke his probation. Spidey said, I hope Colin and McMichaels feel the wrath of God. I'm going to talk about them at the end. That's going to be my last topic. Jordan said his eyes were dry in the Mojave Desert. Mark Stewart said the salt teen queen is running her mouth. I bet she is. She needs something to talk about. She, we haven't heard from her in months. I'm sure her, the coonstress, Brandon Fakem, all them bootlicks, and all of them are running their mouths right now because they couldn't say they, they were so upset from Derek Chauvin a couple months ago. They now they now they can't now they won't be able to talk about anything else but this. Like I said, Dub S, understand this. Dub S needs a win on some of the most mediocre things. They, th why do you think they were the ones that implemented the whole everyone gets a trophy award, even if you lose? The, you know, the participation awards, a Karen came up with that. Karen's came up with the participation trophy, some soccer mom came up with that. So they need to award mediocrity. Oh, they're going to have time tonight. They're going to probably be throwing some bonfires. They're going to be dancing around a dead cat. They may be doing rituals. I don't know. Don't put me in it, though. Don't put me in it. But let's not forget, the reason why he was out there was because of what happened with Jacob Blake. So, like I keep saying in my videos, I'm going to keep saying it. The catalyst was the shooting of an unarmed black man in the back that left him paralyzed from the waist down for the rest of his life. Kami, Kami, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but it's a Kami or Kami. Budo, he said, are black people now convinced there is no excuse to be off code? Unfortunately, we have too many bootlicks in our, on, running around here that are. So I don't think many. Here's the thing. We don't have a system in place to punish them. What you just saw right here was their system punishing their own who were off code. We don't have that. The families of those deceased and the injured, they didn't get any justice. They got the same type of treatment we usually always get. For them to do what they did, that was off code behavior. And that's what, and these were the results. But we don't have a system in place 
where we could punish those of us who are off code. Because if that was the case, it wouldn't be so many coons and sambos running around here. Whether they are in a position like the coonstress or those who are low level, who probably don't have nothing beyond a blue check on Twitter. Mark Stewart said, do you think the victims will sue Rotten House? Some people are saying they might do a civil suit, like a civil lawsuit, sort of like what they did with OJ back in the day and what they did, the families with that, they did win. They just didn't win the case to send him to jail. So they might do that. And you already know they're going to lock this thing up with double jeopardy, so they ain't going to be allowed to try him again. This is done. This is wash your hands of it and just toss it. This is done. Joseph Wines said the victim's girlfriend sympathizes with Rotten House. Hey. <laughs> hey. Was it the one that's injured or the one or the one of the two that's dead? Good. Hey. Like I have some videos coming soon that's gonna put some things in the perspective that's off, you know, just some observances that I've made or made concerning this case. But we'll get to that soon. Melissa said, I hope that little effer has to look over his shoulder for the rest of his life. <laughs> I wouldn't bet on it. He feels like he 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 probably feels like he has a God complex right about now. He's about to be on all types of networks. He about to be on Fox News. He about to be on any type of conservative right leaning platform. He's about to get a whole bunch of interviews. Hey, he might even get a book deal. I predict that Kyle Rittenhouse is going to get a book deal. I predict it. If that John Mattingly, who was one of the ones who was responsible for killing Breonna Taylor, can get a book deal, he can get one. Smoke said, I noticed how the anti-black lynching media did everything to portray Ryan House as the all-American white boy left out his insult tendencies to beat up girls. Yeah, they had to clean up his image. Like, they did not. They Listen, they did the same thing with, uh, with Zimmerman. That's why people saying he's like Zimmerman 2.0 is the only difference is that he didn't kill anybody who was black because they did the same thing with Zimmerman. They made sure not to dig into his past, even though his past was very public knowledge about the stuff that he's done. Just like his past is public knowledge and his was more recent. His stuff was you could find in traces of his past like mid last year, beating up girls. And all types of other things. Him being on, you know, saying certain things about what he wanted to do, but they needed a win when they threw out the when that judge, when that ultimately ultra biased judge threw out that, those weapons charges, which is the ones they knew they probably could have got him on. That was a wrap because they had to throw those out because th th that those charges right there was probably going to be the ones he would have been found guilty on. When they threw that out, it was a wrap. They could have came to a verdict on that day. They, that could have been it. That could have been the day they said he was not guilty. Mark said, Rotten House mom wants people to donate money to them. And you know what? People are going to do it. Ryan House is probably about to have a load of money coming his way. Him and his ratchet mother are about to have a lot of money coming their way. A lot. If Darren Wilson can become a millionaire after killing Mike Brown, I predict this. I predict Kyle Rittenhouse and his mother going to top that. Jonathan said they might try to make a film from this. Hey, it's in the works. Somebody's writing is writing the scene right now as we speak. But yeah, so this is pretty much done. But like, I have a feeling that this will not be the last time that we hear about him. It won't be. They'll he, he they're gonna try him through the news like he's the like he's the grand darling of America. They are, like someone said they're trying to make him to be the all American hero. <laughs> this is what it's come to. This what y'all are looking at, ladies and gentlemen. Before I move to the next story, because like I said, I want to be done by five thirty. What you are looking at on your screen is the face of American heroism. 
It could be someone out here who can find a cure for cancer, but they're not a hero like Kyle Rittenhouse. It could be someone out here who can find a cure for AIDS and HIV, but they're not a hero like Kyle Rittenhouse. Somebody can save a world leader from an assassination, <clears throat> but they're no hero because Kyle Rittenhouse is the all-American hero. <clears throat> Let them tell it. Sunlight said, how do we, and I'm assuming when you say we, you're talking about black people, how do we get to a point when we can punish people? When we have our own little system established, and I think that's the reason why black people are scared to actually punish people is because they don't, because we don't have a system in place that will protect us like that. Could you imagine if black people had a system in place to protect them when we wanted to punish people, those who deserved it anyway? Look at what happened with um, Kenneth Walker. He was protecting his home. And what happened? He gets hit with attempted murder charges. Make it make sense. They came into his home and opened fire. He's protecting his home and the people in it. And he gets hit with attempted murder charges. That's a perfect example. That's why a lot of black people are scared to do it. Because it's like, you're either going to kill me protecting myself, and if I die, it's going to be in vain, because then you're going to let them walk, make them the hero, or I'm going to protect myself, and I'm going to go to jail for protecting myself. So what it is a lose-lose situation? We're at the end of both, of both, we're at both ends of the sword. And both ends of the sword are pointed, so we're going to, so we're going to bleed, we're going to bleed to death, or we're going to bleed and live but still suffer. And that's actually the where I'm headed with. I don't want to go too far into it. But when I do my video about what it's like for us to be on cold versus when they do it, you'll see exactly what I mean, because I'm going to go a little bit further into that. But I just actually gave you a taste of that commentary that's going to be coming within the next week. Exactly, Melissa. Then if we do, damn if we don't. That phrase ap applies to black people probably more than any other group. Like, look at what happened with Michael Johnson. He felt he did what he felt he had to do. What happened? He gets hit with a robotic bomb that we have never seen since. And that was back in 2016. We haven't seen that thing since. You had Christopher Dorner did what he did back in 2013 because he felt he had to do what he had to do because of the corruption in the LAPD. He gets burned alive in the cabin that he was found in. They never got a chance to make it to trial. They never got a chance to tell their side of the story. As far as they're concerned, they were terrorists. They already made up in their mind who they were. See, they take them out so they don't tell their story, and then they'll let mainstream media make up a story for them and a narrative to make you hate them. I can tell you right now, Michael Johnson, Chris Dorner, and Gavin Long, I don't hate neither one of them. As a matter of fact, on my channel, I made sure to establish a day for all three of them, and that's the day on which they did what they did. Now, with that being said, let me move on to the next story. And that's involving the shooting of young Dolph. Now, I did not immediately jump onto my channel and make a video about him because I could have easily did it. I could have racked up in views and did it because it was a heavy trending death. But the reason I did not do it is because I was not too familiar with him. I've heard the name before, but I never listened to his music. So I wasn't about to hop up on there and make a whole bunch of, oh my God, I can't believe it. It's so sad. This is so, it is sad, but I, you know, I wasn't about to do all that. I wasn't about to do all the fake stuff. No, I was just for clicks and views. I wasn't. So that's why I saved it for today. And I wanted to use this picture in particular because I love this picture. This is a picture of him, his girlfriend, and their two children. And it's sad when you're looking at this picture and knowing that one of these people is no longer going to be in the picture. So basically what happened is he was at home because he, he's from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I believe they said he was visiting his mother. And he went to this cookie spot called Makita's Cookies, which is a staple there in 
um, Memphis, especially since it was one of his favorite spots to go to. And he kind of helped it help the brand really uh, grow like that. And it is a black owned business, by the way, been around for like 20 something odd years. But he went there to go get some cookies. Um, someone saying he went to go get it for his mom. And then all of a sudden, these two guys, because they actually showed the picture like from the surveillance, got out of a car and literally shot him right there in front of the like right there in front of the shop, like right there on where, um, where his car was at. Because they said he drove a particular car that if you saw the car, you knew it was him because nobody else drove that type of car but him. So when you saw that car, you knew that it was him. So they actually have on the surveillance camera like a still shot of the two guys that shot him. But you can't really tell who it is because they had their mask on. They had some shades on. They were dressed in all black and they were using they weren't using handguns when they killed him. Like they actually was um, using like some automatic style guns. He said that his, he said that's his wife. OK, well, excuse me, his wife. This is his wife, not his girlfriend, his wife. And they just killed them right there in front of the shop and in front of the store and they drove off. So they are right now, as far as I know, they're trying to find who did it. Then, you know, it led to some they, they said it was some retaliation that happened as well because they believe that some people was involved and they went and tried to take out the people they thought was involved. So it's a big mess going on down there. But what got me was when they did the memorial. So the, the, the cookie shop had the board up their windows like they're boarded up right now. And they had a memorial for him right there in front of the in front of the shop. Right there at the memorial, gunshots popped off. Somebody actually tried to shoot some people at the memorial. I said, what's really going on? I said, what is really going on? And in case y'all want to know, he was 36. So he was in my age bracket. He had four years on him. He was 36 years old. So he is a he is a millennial. Noam King said that was a hit, and those dudes that shot him looked like they were non-black. Well, I do believe that it was a hit. I can't really call if they were non-black or not. I don't want to put out there that that's what the case is. But there's some very fishy stuff going around here because I – you know, looked online and everything like that. And they said he was signed to this record company called Empire Records. And on that record label were two other rappers. And both of those rappers were killed in the same month. Like they were all killed in the month of November. One with like literally about a week or so apart. They said that Young Dolph, he did a lot for the community. I think they said he even owned his masters. When I heard that, and I heard about the record company. I said something. OK, and something. The red flags for me are starting to raise up. Because you are always here when people say that they own their masters, especially if you're a black artist, then weird stuff starts to happen. So it's it's, it's a lot of moving parts. Of this. I don't want to like jump into the the pool of conspiracy theories, but how many times have we heard about artists, especially black artists being taken out after they get their masters or when they own their masters? I'm just saying. Talking to Grimmer said definitely it hit they didn't rob a carjacking, right? Because the car was still there. The car was still there. And what's eerie about it is because somebody posted a video where he went to this cookie spot like the week before he was killed. So he literally got killed right in the same spot that he was just at. And I think, and I truth now I do believe that this was a hit. I think that he was definitely targeted for sure. But it's just, I think for me, the unfortunate thing is looking at this picture, a wife no longer has her husband and the kids no longer have their father. Like, look at how young those two kids are. They're young. This is the time where they need their father in their life and they no longer have that. 
Their father was literally taken away from them in the blink of an eye. I even saw a video online where they were at home and they were playing with the little phone football. Like his daughter had passed, had passed on the ball and then he was tossing the ball to his son and he caught it and they pretended like he had a touchdown. Like they like when I saw that, I was like, wow, like they're, they're not going to have that. They're not going to have that again. That's that's done. And he was young, only 36. He was born in 1985. But yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy out here. It's wild. And the crazy part about it is, we can only speculate what really what the reason was. But to be honest, we may never find out what really what the real reason was as to why he was murdered. We'll just have to speculate, but we may never find out the reason why. Jonathan said, you, you mentioned in your videos before when a black celebrity gets their masters, they die. Chris Brown better be careful because he got his masters at the beginning of last year. Um, so I would just say be very careful, especially since he, they tend to like to make him a huge target in the media. But they really haven't had him in the media like that lately. So the last thing I heard about Chris Brown was that collab he did with Mario on their latest song that came out like two weeks ago. I'm glad you said that, Noam King. He said they never figured out who tried to hit him in Charlotte back in 2018. That's what I forgot to mention. This guy was almost taken out two more additional times before this. Because he had two other brushes with death before this. This is that now they got him. So that when I heard that, I said, yeah, it's definitely a hit. I don't know if it's something... I don't, that he was wrapped up in. I don't know if he owed anybody anything or whatever, but I like to tend to think that the music industry has a lot of ties to the mob. So I don't, like I said, I don't know if he owed anybody anything or whatever the case may be, but they tried to take him out two more times before this. And they say third time's the charm. And unfortunately, this was the third time and it was the charm because this was the one that took him out. Sunlight said, if things are that hot, why no protection? That's a good question. That's a question that a lot of people was asking, like, why didn't you have security? Because I'm going to be honest, if I was like that, I would definitely have all types of security. I don't care how it makes me look. I'm trying to make sure my life is guarded. I'm trying to stay as protected as possible. No one said, once in Charlotte and the other in L.A. Original man said that this was the fourth time. So there was a third time too. I'm thinking that it was only two two times before this. So there was a third time. Hmm. That's crazy. But I do, however, offer condolences to this man's family, though, because, like I said, I'm just looking at this picture and it's like, wow, his wife is going to have to look at images like this and be like. He's gone. Like, he's not coming back. How do I tell my kids that their dad is gone? They're so young to understand it. <sighs> but anyway, let me move on to the next story. And this story right here actually hits close to home because it did happen in the state that I live in. And shout out to the 1LVZ because he talked about it on his channel. And it's about this 72-year-old black woman that was found hanging from a tree in Maryland. They bet not try to insult my intelligence and say that this was a suicide because you know they like to do that. It says the body of a 72-year-old black woman was found hanging from a tree in Annapolis, Maryland neighborhood on Wednesday. According to the Annapolis Police Department statement, the unattended death was discovered at 7.30 a.m. on November 3rd. On 11th, 3rd, 2021, at approximately 7.30 a.m., officers from the Annapolis Police Department responded to the 600 block of Bell Drive for the report and an unattended death. When officers arrived, they located a 72-year-old female victim. Preliminary investigation reveals the incident does not appear to be criminal in nature. Here they go. 
the victim's identity is being held with help withheld pending confirmation that the extended family has been notified. Although investigators don't suspect foul play, one community activist isn't sure that's the case. See, they already started it. When they say that they don't suspect foul play, they are already leaning into the territory of suicide. Carl Snowden took to his Facebook page to give the public more detailed information concerning the victim. His post revealed that the older woman was black. Tick tock, tick tock. Annapolis police officers just took down the deceased body of an African American woman. The unidentified woman was found hanging from a tree in the Annapolis Walk community. I just want to figure out how is it that no cameras pick this stuff up? I just want to know how do cameras not pick this up? Like, how did she get up in the tree? So, you mean to tell you, you should really trying to tell me she climbed up in this tree and hung herself? with neighbors around like nobody saw anything snowed in all the woman sheila finlayson's quick action getting to the scene allowed them to offer the public a racial description of the deceased when oh hold on while residents aren't outraged at the moment the woman's determined cause of death will get an appropriate response according to the activists the Capital Gazette reported that some students on their way to school saw the woman's body because the Annapolis Walk community serves as school bus stops for Mills Parole Elementary, Annapolis Middle School, and Annapolis High School. Them kids got to be traumatized. Just imagine walking to school and you see a body hanging from a tree. And it's not a dummy. It's not like a Halloween prop. While walking to the bus stop this morning, some students may have witnessed a tragic scene involving the death of an adult individual. Richard Rogers and Casey Hunt, principals of the Mills Parole Elementary in Annapolis Middle School, wrote in a letter to parents of students at the two learning institutions. Although police have not called this a lynching, although that's what it should be called because that's what it is, Maryland is no stranger to the egregious act. The Maryland lynching memorial documented at least 40 lynching in the state's history. The last recorded lynching in the state was George Armwood in 1933. Annapolis police are still investigating but the situation does beg the question, how and why would a 72 year old black woman climb a tree to hang herself? Exactly. That would make no sense. And the same can go for the other black bodies that they have found. Like a set um, that makes no sense. She's 72. She's a old, she's an elderly woman. That's a lot of upper body strength she would need in order to pull something off like that on her own. But they want to quickly, they say no foul play. That's cold for, we about to say it's a suicide. That was no suicide. And again, how is it that there's no cameras picking up when this stuff happens? And if you look at the picture right here, this is where they found, like, this is the sheet right here. So her body was somewhere up in here. And they did it at, and they had to do it at night when nobody was out, no one could see. She was seven, darling, she was 72. There is no way, none, that they would expect me to believe that she did this herself. I don't believe that. No King said last recorded lynching just because they have an analogy doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Exactly. It says last recorded. It doesn't mean that that was the only lynching that happened. Exactly. Because there were several more that most likely did. They just didn't report it or record it. But they can go on and want us to believe this if they want to. But I don't believe that this uh, woman killed herself. This definitely has foul play written all over it. Huh, let me move on to the next story. They can insult our intelligence if they want to, but they ain't getting me. I wanted to talk about this uh, nine-year-old boy by the name of Ezra Blount. He was the latest victim in the astral world deaths. And as far as I know, was the youngest. Because the last time we heard, he was the one that was in a coma, basically fighting for his life. And they basically had already predicted early on, it's no way he was going to make it out of there alive. Because he had too many brain injuries. So 
you know, they pulled the plug on him rather quickly. They were just holding the hope to see what would happen, but he didn't make it, unfortunately. And I think he was the youngest victim of what happened. That whole Astro World situation was crazy. Like, and Travis Scott, he is up to his eyeballs in lawsuits. I mean, literally to the brim. Like he his his career is about to probably hit a t a hit a tanking level by the time all of this is said and done with. And I can't feel bad for him really because like I told y'all last week, some of the stuff that he said was just just crazy about when it came to Mike Brown and Trayvon Martin. No, he's on his own with that. But I still beg the question. Why did parents take their children to this? I know they said that when they interviewed the dad, they said the dad said that his son, this boy, his favorite artist was Travis Scott. I understand it. Like, if you know, if that's your favorite artist and everything like that. But if you was going to take him to a concert, take it to like a more enclosed, like an arena type of concert. Don't take him to no festival style concert. That's way too many people. I've heard horror stories about what happens at these festivals. Not just what happened at this one, but at any festival. And you won't catch me dead out there. That's way too many people. I cannot be around that many people. I don't care who it is. But still, like, you know, Travis Scott, he has some blame, but he doesn't, he's not the only one with blame. At the end of the day, these parents, they took their kids to this event. And now you have now you have two dead children, because remember, the other one who died, I think he was, what, 10 or something like that. And now this one. So you have two minors on your hands that are deceased from this. Lawsuits are coming like crazy. The family's about to go in and the lawyers are recommending that they do. And they most likely are going to win. But the parents definitely hold some responsibility for this. Like, I, you can't just let them off the hook. Like, what were you thinking? You are the parent. You have the, the power to tell your child no, no matter how upset they may get that they can't go to this concert. You tell them to, hey, just stream the music. And when they go into a concert that's more enclosed, like an arena or a stadium, then you can do that. But that, that festival style thing, that's not going to work. And I could barely understand anything Travis Scott was saying when he was on that stage. He really was up there trying to sound like a, a, rock, a rock star. I'm like, sir, just stick to rap or whatever it is that you're doing because rock is not your lane. Like, I feel like I needed closed captioning or a translator to understand what it to even hear an ounce of what he was saying. I didn't get it. No King says Travis Scott going to do career going to do everything but stall after this. His girl does a blood ritual, then he hosts that concert and he's trending worldwide. Don't be shocked to be his bit. Well, with all the lawsuits he's going to get, he'll be lucky if he can hit billionaire status. As well, I said a lot of kids like Travis Scott because he's on Fortnite. I forgot that they created like a whole Fortnite character behind it. I remember them kids you know, last year playing Fortnite and them kids love Fortnite. So you do got a point there. Jordan said, I don't understand how he's got so many fans, mainly probably because of who he's dating or who he's with. Kylie Jenner, in a way, elevated his celebrity status to another level. If you want to be honest. Because people gravitate towards her.
But RIP to this this child that lost his man. I know that had to be painful getting trampled on by them people. I couldn't even imagine the pain and the pressure of all of that happening to me all at once. Let me move on to the next story. Oh, man. Oh, I really wanted y'all to see this one. I really wanted y'all to see this. Um, I hate when them ads be so daggone long. But this is a video right here of this Karen throwing soup on the manager, I guess, because maybe she got the order wrong. I don't know. But she literally acted out in all of her Karenisms with this one. And you're about to um, witness this as soon as this ad is done. You can tell she was prepared to do it because she took the top off of it. There it is. You said it was over a melted top. Oh, really? I wish there was some sound with this, but there's no sound. Now, they said, luckily, that the soup wasn't hot. It wasn't hot. Otherwise, it would have definitely burned her face. But she said the chemicals in the soup, because I watched the interview because I was watching on Black Light Revelations channel. They said, she said that the, the, the uh, not the chemicals, but the ingredients in the soup actually caused her nose to bleed because it got into like that, that cavity area. And it did cause her nose to bleed. When I saw this, it reminded me of a video that I did on my channel um, like last year where this woman, went, this Karen went into the Starbucks and she got mad at the barrister because she got her order slightly wrong. And then she took the cup and threw it at the, um, at the worker. Now, luckily... The top was on when she threw it because if she did what this woman did, she definitely would have burned her because that was hot coffee. That wasn't cold coffee. That was hot coffee because you could tell by the type of cup. It wasn't a foam cup, so that was hot. I'm telling you, these Karens are out of control. And notice that when she took that top off and threw that soup at her, she literally scurried up out of that store fast as I don't know what. But I think that they ended up they ended up finding her, though, because they said the woman who threw the soup is facing criminal charges. I think they ended up finding her and they took her mug. They took a mug shot and everything because that's definitely assault. But you know what I've noticed, though? A lot of the times when these Karens get into it with these workers, you ever notice that most of them tend to be white themselves? Like the Karen who gets into it, the worker, the worker tends to be white. I've seen this several times. Rarely will they ever get into it with a black worker, man or woman. And usually if they do, it doesn't go beyond being verbal. It never, ever gets physical. Jordan says she's also a nurse. She's a nurse acting like that. She needs to be fired. She don't need to be around nobody. Like I can, I probably can count on my hands a time when, when white customers get into it with black employees physically. Because a lot of the times I've seen it never goes beyond verbal because they already know what will happen. Blue Henny says she'll be out in three months to do a court order therapy and it won't show up on her record. We'll see. But I do hope that the worker sues her into oblivion. That'll hurt more than whatever the court gives her. 
break them pockets because I will sue her down to the lint and dust in her pockets. But let me move on to the next one. We are moving right along, people. We are moving right along. I, now, this story right here, man, when I heard about this, this story right here pissed me all the way off. And I'm sure it's going to do the same thing for you. So it says right here, black farm workers say they lost jobs to foreigners who were paid more. Anyone care to guess what those foreigners look like? I'll tell you where they were from. They were from South Africa. They said longtime field laborers in the Mississippi Delta sent a lawsuit that they were asked to train white guest workers from South Africa before losing their jobs to them. They got replaced by white South Africaners. White South Africans. And this actually led me to making a tweet on Twitter when I found out about this. And when they say black people are lazy, we don't want to work. Yes, we do. But when you have stuff like this, it makes it impossible. It says for more than a quarter century, Richard Strong worked the fertile farmland of the Mississippi Delta, just as his father and grandfather did a family lineage of push of punishing labor and meager earnings that stretched back to his enslaved ancestors brought from Africa. He tilled the soil, fertilized crops, and irrigated the fields, nurturing an annual bounty of cotton, soybeans, and corn for prominent farming family. I've been around farming all my life. Black family is, is all we knew. Black families with deep connections to the Delta have historically been the ones to perform field work that began to change about a decade ago when the first dozens of young white workers flew in from South Africa on special guest worker visas. So they basically do all the work and in comes the colonizer and they want to pick up not even the slack, but just what they've already done. And then say that, you know, we'll take it from here after the most of the work is done, the hard labor anyway. Mr. Strong and his co-workers trained the men who by last year were being lured across the globe with wages of more than $11 an hour compared to the $7.25 an hour that Mr. Strong and other black local workers were paid. Growers brought in more South Africans with each passing year and now are employed at more than 100 farms across the Delta. Mr. Strong, age 50, and several other longtime workers said they were told their services were no longer needed. I never did imagine that it would come to the point where they would be hiring foreigners instead of people like me. From the wheat farms in the Midwest to the citrus groves in California's Central Valley, growers have increasingly turned to foreign workers as aging farm workers exit the fields and low-skilled workers offer jobs in construction, hospitality, warehouses, which offer higher pay year-round work and sometimes benefits. The agricultural guest worker program known by the shorthand H. 2A was once shunned by farmers here and elsewhere as expensive and bureaucratic, but the continuing farm labor shortages across the country pushed H2A visas up to 213,394 in the 2020 fiscal year from 55,384 in 2011. Our choices between importing our food <coughs> or importing the work force necessary to produce domestically, said Craig Regul Brudge, I probably butchered his name a veteran agricultural industry advocate who was an expert on the program. That's never been truer than it is today. Virtually all new workers entering into the agricultural workforce these days are H-2A workers. In the Mississippi Delta, a region of high unemployment and entrenched poverty, the labor mobility is widening the pool of field workers is having a devastating effect on local workers who are often ill-equipped to compete with new hires, frequently younger and willing to work longer hours. The new competition is upending what for many has been a way for a life in the rich farmlands of Mississippi. It's like being robbed of your heritage. In Mississippi, where the legacy of slavery and racism has long pervaded work in the cotton fields, a federal lawsuit by Mr. Strong and five other displaced farm, farm workers claims that the new foreign workers were illegally paid at higher rates than local black workers who had who said it had been for years, been subjected to racial slurs and other demeaning treatment from a white supervisor. Two additional plaintiffs for preparing to join the suit 
which says farmers violated civil rights laws by hiring only white workers from South Africa, a country with its own history of racial justice. Black workers have been doing this work for generations, said Ty Pinkins, a lawyer at the Mississippi Center for Justice, which is representing the black farm workers in the lawsuit. They know the land, they know the seasons, they know the equipment. I'm not going to read any further than that because I pretty much can get the gist of it. So they literally put them on the back burner to bring white South Africans over from the continent to do what may be less labor and get paid more. While they get paid less and they, pay, and they made sure to do that so it could force them out. They trying to phase them out. This is what this is like some global gentrification right here. Like, how did you manage to just reach all the way to South Africa for something that's happening in Mississippi? They didn't even reach through the states. They went all the way to South Africa. That's some desperation right there for you to get them up out of there. But they love to say that we're lazy. We don't like to work. That is not true because you have stories like this and there's so many more stories out there like this. That prove otherwise. But yeah, this like I said, this is like some global gentrification right here. They want they want them gone and to replace them with some random foreigners. And you think them foreigners gonna say no? They gonna jump up and say yes if it means that they can get out of South Africa. They couldn't even get black people from over there to do it. They said, "We just gonna go and get the white South Africans. We're gonna pay them more, and we're gonna fizzle the ones here who already know the land and work it out." And it was a plan. They said the plan was, you know, to train them and then pay them more and then get them up out of it. That was the whole plan. And the crazy part about it is this happens in a lot of job environments where they'll bring someone in a new face and have you train them. And then they said, oh, by the way, we don't need you anymore. Goodbye. Someone like said it's going to keep happening as long as we have to go to them forever. That's the thing. They did not go to them for anything. They decided to work the land. They just came in and decided, hey, we're going to claim this. See, this is one thing black people really have to understand. You could be minding your business, but if they decide they're going to try to come up and run up and do the run up on you, they will do it. I actually saw a video on Twitter or maybe it was Instagram. I don't know where you had these white female cyclists somewhere over in Africa tried to ride their bikes through some town that um, some black people there were owning or ran. And them black women that was there, they made sure they said, no, you're not going to ride your bike through here. You're going to turn right back around from wherever it is you rode from and go back, to take the trail backwards that way. And they turned them bikes right around and they went back. They do this everywhere and all he had armed with them was these sticks they didn't have no guns no swords no knives none of that they just had some sticks and basically said if you try to come across me I'm going to knock you off your bike. Now, let's see if your helmet is going to protect you from that. And this is what actually develops, like, well, for black people, this is actually what develops a sense of 
I cannot trust them. And when you are in a position like this, why would you? Why would anyone trust them? Now I'm going to move on to the last uh, story of the day. It's not really a story. It's actually a video. And that's involving this line of questioning right here that happened. Hold on. Let me rewind it back. This is dealing with the McMichaels, specifically Travis McMichael, who was on the stand. And it said, Travis McMichael confirms that Ahmaud Arbery was not a threat to him. He was merely running. I said, after just reading that and listening to this, they should just close the case and send all of them up the, up the stream, up the river with no paddle. All three of them. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and we'll go from there. Okay, so y'all heard that right there. Every question that she was asking him had a no to it. Asking, did he run? Like, he was just running. That's the only time he said yes, that he was running. That was the only time that he said yes, was when he was running. Thomas, you said no sign. You might need to refresh your page. Because the sound is on. She asked him, did he have any weapons? He said no. She asked if, you know, did he go in his pocket to reach for anything? He said no. Every question she had for him was a no until she asked at the end, was he just running? And that's when he said yes. Now, this is a case of self-defense. Not what they did with Rittenhouse. Now, this was a case of self-defense of Ahmaud Arbery defending himself from these uh, these deviants. And he put up a good fight considering one of the time he had a fight while actually after having been shot one time. Okay, I'm going to play it back because some people said they didn't hear it. So I'm going to play it again. So that was the first one. She said, you saw him reach into his pockets and he said no. Because basically they're using all of the testimonies that they gave against them at this point. Because they everything he's saying no to was questions that was asked to him before where he had a yes. So basically he's basically confirming that him and his dad were lying the entire time. She said, you never yelled. He said no. Another no. And he looked like he tried to think whether to say yes or no. I said, you better tell the truth. Remember, you are you you uh, you could face perjury charges on top of what you're already facing. Hold on. So y'all saying y'all can't hear it? Because I definitely have the audio on. I don't know why y'all can't hear it. Hold on. Let me try this again.
And at this point in time, when you did y'all, did y'all hear that? Did y'all just hear that little piece right here? Burford, he's not reaching. Okay, so y'all said, okay, let me run it back then. And at this point in time, when you first see him on Burford, he's not reaching into his pockets. Run, no, ma'am, not running, no, ma'am. No. And he never yelled at you guys? No, ma'am. Never threatened you at all? No, ma'am. Not never verbal. brandished any weapons? Sorry, you're only trying to finish his answer. Yeah, he did not threaten me verbally, no, ma'am. All right. Didn't brandish any weapons? Uh, no, ma'am. Didn't pull out any guns? No, ma'am. Didn't pull out any knife? No, ma'am. Never reached for anything, did he? Uh, no. He just ran. Yes, he was just ran. Okay, so there it is right there. So everyone said the sound is good, so y'all basically just heard it. Every question that she asked him had a no to it. And this goes against the testimony that he and his father gave, which I'm sure had yeses to him. But this right here basically confirms that no, he didn't do any of what they claimed he did. And when she asked him, was he just merely running? He said, yes. So that's the only question out of her line of questionings that he had a yes for. Everything else was a no. I said, after hearing this, do they even need to deliberate? Just find him and his dad and that other one guilty. And then he tried to pull the tears on the stand like Rittenhouse did. And I'm like, okay. We see where you're getting your little tips from. But it's not going to work. But he basically just told on himself. Now, this is the trial. This is the case right here where I want them to be guilty across the board. Jonathan said he got emotional on the stand. Yeah, like I said, he tried to do the Rotten House thing. He tried to do that. And I was like, get, get out of here with that. Exactly, Jordan. Case closed. Nothing more to see here. Like the case, the case should be rested after this. But we'll see because you know they they'll try anything. I think they tried to do the mistrial thing, and then you know you had the um that hick attorney of this. He made that comment about the black pastors, and people got riled up about that. So this should be. In a perfect world, this should be a pretty clear and cut dry thing of finding them guilty. But, you know, they might try to pull something at the end. But in a perfect world, they're guilty. Exactly, Sunlight. A waste of taxpayers' money. A waste of our money and our time. But that was pretty much the last story that I had to discuss. Like I said, I wanted to be done before 530 and that I got through all of the stories that I needed to go through. Shout out to everybody who came through on the stream today. I know we started a little bit late because, like I said, I was trying to get my videos up for tomorrow ready. Of course, y'all know 10, 2 and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. Make sure y'all have that bell clicked, even though sometimes it don't work, but have it clicked anyway. If you don't think that it's clicked, go check to see if it's on and check to see if you're still subscribed to the channel because YouTube may have unsubscribed you. Um, make sure that, you know, if you're in the discord, yet you're online, that way you'll get notified in there. I know the notifications work in there um, when I post new videos. Premiere videos happening at six o'clock this evening. And that's pretty much it. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Friday was, well, for those of on the East Coast, it seemed like our Friday is almost done because the sun is down. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will talk to you all later.